Hello there, welcome to CXC Math TV. Today we will be looking at solving inequalities. Well, we're gonna do it in a two part video. In part one, we're going to look at determining the solution set of quadratic inequalities. And in part two, we're gonna be determining the solution of inequalities that are of a rational form, rational inequalities. So let's get into quadratic inequalities. So consider this equation, x squared minus seven x plus six equal to zero and solve this equation for x. So by solving this equation for x, we can use the quadratic formula and it's already in standard form. So we know that our a is one or b is negative seven and c is six. If we go ahead and use the quadratic formula, we will get x is equal to six or x is equal to one by doing the necessary substitutions for a, b, and c. Once we get x is six and x is one, well, we'll go ahead and sketch the graph of f of x equal to x squared minus 7x plus 6. The two roots are 1 and 6 and the y-axis intercepts is 6. So the graph looks like what is being displayed on the screen right here. Ah. Now what if I were to ask you this question? Number 1, to solve the equation equal to 0. Number 2, solve x squared minus 7x plus 6 greater than 0, no an inequality. And the third one, solving the expression less than zero. What would you do? No, in solving the equation equal to zero, we want the roots. So looking at the graph right there, this is the graph and we want when x equal to zero, the answers is x equal one and x equal six. Now in the second case, when we want the x squared minus seven x plus six to be greater than zero, we still can draw the graph, but then we want the portion of the graph that is above the line y equals zero. So we can shade that onto the graph right there. And so the solution region is going to be x is less than one or x is less than six. Ah. And so when we're solving x squared minus seven x plus six less than zero, we want the portion of the graph that is below the line y equals zero. And if we shade that portion, we want when x is between 1 and 6. Ah. And so just to test the solution to verify it for you, if we started with the actual equation, when you substitute x as 1, you're going to see that it satisfies the equation and we get 0. When we substitute x as 6 and we input it, we see it satisfy the equation and we still get 0. Ah. Now in the first quadratic inequality when it is greater than 0, the solution region we got was x is less than 1 or x is greater than 6. So if we substitute a number less than 1, let's use 0 into the equation. We're going to get 0 squared minus 7 times 0 plus 6, which equals 6. That is greater than 0, so it is indeed true. When we try a number that is bigger than 6, we can use 7, 8, 9, 10. For our case, we're going to use 9. 9 squared minus 7 times 9 plus 6. And that works out to be 28, which is still greater than zero. Ah, so we realize that the solution region is indeed correct. Ah. Likewise, if we go to the next part now when we want it, when the expression is less than zero, the solution region is between one and six. We can try values between one and six. For example, x being two, we see that that works out to be negative four, which is less than zero. And we can try a number like four which still works out to be negative four, which is less than zero. So realize that all of these solutions are true. Ah. So what are some observations we can take away? Well, given any quadratic equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, to find the roots, we know we use the quadratic formula x is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac over two a. Now, let the two roots that you'd get be R1 and R2. Now, whenever A is greater than 0, the graph is going to smile. Alright, the graph is going to smile. And when the graph smile, then the range of values of X, whenever you're solving that quadratic inequality greater than 0, is going to be X is such that X is less than the first root that you found, and X is greater than the second root. 
and whenever you're solving the inequality when it is less than zero the range of values of x is going to be x's between the first root and the second root just so we can see it diagrammatically this is what it looks like when the solution is equal to zero we get r1 and r2 when we're solving the quadratic inequality less than zero the range of values for x is going to be that shaded region right there between r1 and r2 and whenever we're solving the quadratic inequality greater than zero the solution region is going to be x is less than r1 and x is greater than r2 now whenever the quadratic graph fronts and we're solving the quadratic inequality greater than zero the range of values of x is going to be x is between r1 and r2 when we solve it greater than zero and whenever we're solving the inequality less than zero the range of values of x are going to be x is less than r1 and x is greater than r2 just to look at it diagrammatically these are cases when a is less than zero and so we know that the quadratic fronts now that we know that the quadratic fronts, when we solve it equal to zero, we're still obtaining the roots R1 and R2. When we solve it greater than zero, we're asking for the portion of the graph above the line Y equals zero, which is between R1 and R2, that yellow region shaded there. And then when we want the quadratic inequality to be less than zero, we want below the line Y equals zero. And so that is when X is less than R1, but at the same time, x is greater than r2. Hey! In order to understand these, it's best when you actually do some questions. So let's do some questions. So hey! solve the following quadratic inequalities. x squared plus 2x minus 19, less than 5. 2x squared plus 6x plus 4, greater than 0. 4 minus 4x minus 3x squared, less than or equal to 0 and 225 minus 16x minus x squared greater than or equal to zero. Let us do the first one together. So first thing we need to do is put it in standard form. So we have x squared minus 2x minus 19 less than five. So put it in standard form. We want it to be in the form y is less than zero. So we bring over the five to get x squared minus 2x minus 24 is less than zero. So we can split the middle term and write it as x squared minus 6x plus 4x minus 24 less than 0. We can factorize to get x plus 4 times x minus 6 less than 0. Now from that, x plus 4 equal to 0 would give us a root of negative 4. And the x minus 6, that would give us a root of 6 when you set those part equal to 0. Or quadratic graph. But remember, we want the portion when y is less than 0, right? It's in the form y is less than 0. So the region that we want is where we're going to shade right here in black. So once you find the two roots, you look where you want y less than 0. That's the region in black right there. And so the answer is going to be x is between negative 4 and 6. Now you can always feel free to try a number between negative 4 and 6. To actually test it in the inequality to see if it is true if you don't feel confident in your answer test it so try a number like 2 or 0 or 1 whatever the case may be you can try a number and it's going to satisfy that inequality so now go ahead and attempt question number two pause and attempt so again the first thing we need to do is put it in standard form but it's already in standard form for us, the 2x squared plus 6x plus 4 greater than 0. So we already have it in the form y is greater than 0. So we just need to split the middle term to get 2x squared plus 4x plus 2x plus 4 greater than 0. Then we factor out 2x. So we have 2x in bracket x plus 2 plus 2 times x plus 2 greater than 0. And so that simplifies to be x plus 2 times 2x plus 2 greater than 0. Once we get to this part, if you are to set x plus 2 equal to 0, that will give us negative 2. And if you are to set 2x plus 2 equal 0, that will give you negative 1. Alright, but we want, remember, we want the portion when y is greater than 0. 
When y is greater than 0, that part of the graph is above the y-axis. So we can shade that part of when the graph is above the line y equals 0. And so our answer is going to be x is less than negative 2 or x is greater than negative 1. And that is your answer. Nice. All right. So pause and attempt question number 3. So again, putting it in standard form, we have 4 minus 4x minus 3x squared less than or equal to 0. Well, you could rewrite it and put your x squared term first, then your x term, and then your constant. But we're just going to keep it as it is and split the middle term. Splitting the middle term, it becomes 4 plus 2x minus 6x minus 3x squared less than or equal to 0. We can then factor out 2. From the first 2 to have 2 times 2 plus x minus 3x in bracket 2 plus x less than or equal to 0. And so finally it works out to be 2 plus x times 2 minus 3x less than or equal to 0. Now since we know that the a is negative, we know that the graph is going to frown because we have minus 3x squared. So the graph frowns and if you set 2 plus x equal to 0, you're going to get negative 2 and 2 over 3. That's when you set the 2 minus 3x equal to 0. So those are the two roots. But we want when the graph is less than or equal to 0. So the portion of the graph that's going to be less than or equal to 0 is going to be when x is less than negative 2 or when x is greater than 2 over 3 as we shade that in black right there. Notice we put a less than or equal to and also a greater than or equal to. Because this question had a less than or equal to in it. Alright, so look out for those questions. Alright, and let's try the final one right here. Solve the quadratic inequality 225 minus 16x minus x squared greater than or equal to 0. So usually... Alright, so as you paused and attempted, usually we'd say put it in standard form first. Put it in the form y is less than or equal to 0, but that's okay. We're just going to solve it as it is. So splitting the middle term as minus 25x plus 9x, we can then factorize. Factorizing, it's going to become 25 plus x times 9 minus x less than or equal to 0. In that case, we set the 25 plus x equal to 0, and that gives us negative 25. I will set 9 minus x equal to 0 and that gives us 9. So the roots are negative 25 and 9. So because we, want, because we want the portion of the graph that is greater than or equal to 0, we want in that black region there. When the line is greater than or equal to 0, or when the curve rather is greater than or equal to 0, that's between negative 25 and 9. So the solution is x is between negative 25 and 9.